Welcome back, Golden Family. I'm very excited for this one. Throughout my social media presence, many of you have asked me what's my favorite food. And I always reply with the same thing. I love sushi in all forms. Do I look like a trash can? Why is my hair like that? Bro, hey Arnold looking. I was blessed with the opportunity a couple years ago to work one day at a sushi restaurant. It was a very high-end restaurant, and in that two hours, I learned a lot. Now, it's very important to know that your boy is definitely not a sushi chef, and the sushi that we make is definitely not authentic. But you know what we like to do here in America? Ruin everything and put our lovely fattening twist on it. AKA the cream cheese and the lovely additives that we like doing. At the end of the day, I'm just documenting my journey. I like to make it as easy as possible for you guys. But at the same time, we always respect the authenticity of the dishes. So shout out to Japan for this one. The number one thing that people struggle with making properly is the sushi rice. This is simply what I do. This is sushi rice, AKA Cal Rose rice. It's a short grain rice and it's very important to use this type of rice when making sushi. I like to dump it into a strainer and I always like to make extra rice so I could make like fried rice after. Now it's very important to wash the rice. Start with some cold water and start rinsing out the rice. You could wash the rice under a bowl of water and sort of agitate the starch off. When the water is nice and clear, the sushi rice is done being showered. Rice goes into the pot. I simply follow the measurements of water that's written on the package. In this instance, to each cup of rice, it's a cup and a quarter of water. You see how the water is nice and clear? Now let's bring this mixture to a boil. Now once the rice starts to bubble, we're gonna cover it and drop to a simmer which simply means we're gonna drop it to a low and we're gonna cook the rice for about 20 minutes. Now as the rice cooks, we're gonna work on some magic. There's a reason why sushi rice is nice and sticky and it just hits different than regular rice. In a lovely bowl, I'm gonna add a bunch of rice vinegar and what I personally like to do is heat this mixture up for a couple seconds. Okay, it took about like 20 seconds. We literally just wanted to warm it up so it melts down the sugar that we're gonna add and all the salt. And now we're gonna mix this mixture up until everything is nice and dissolved. This is what makes your sushi rice beautiful. Alrighty, let's talk nori. Nori is a seaweed that you put the rice on. The first time ever that I made sushi, I used the whole nori sheet. This is what changed my life. When you're making sushi, if you put rice on the whole piece of nori, and then when you slice up the sushi, when you slice up the sushi, it's a huge chunk of rice. It's like this big old hunk and the rice is overlapping and stuff. What you want to do is cut your nori piece in half. This way you have a lot less rice and you have a lot more filling to rice ratio, which in my opinion is 10 times better. You almost want the rice to not overlap. You can literally slice this in half or you could just buy them prepped. Okay, so the rice took about 20 minutes to cook. We're gonna go in with our rice vinegar mixture and we're just gonna fold it into the rice. Now you cannot make sushi with hot rice. So what we're gonna do, toss the rice into like a flat surface so it cools down quickly. Now you don't want the surface to dry out. You either wanna cover it with a damp towel or a damp paper towel. That way it stays moist and sticky, but doesn't dry out as it's cooling down. At the restaurant to speed up the process, they used to like put like a fan on from the side. But if you plan ahead, you don't have to do all that. In my opinion, if you're a beginner, one of the most important things is a bamboo roller. Now these make the process of rolling the sushi so much easier and I'm gonna teach you how to make them. And especially if you're using like cream cheese and a bunch of sauces, it's very important to keep this clean. So what I like to do is just wrap it up with a whole lot of saran wrap. Alrighty, for the fish, I'm using a bluefin tuna. This is from Noble Fish Michigan, which has the best supply of fresh fish in my opinion. And the highest quality. And no, that was not sponsored or an ad, just my opinion. And they do supply all the restaurants in the area. I like making spicy tuna because it makes it a lot easier to prep and I'm gonna just slice down the fish right now just like this make sure you use your sharpest knife in town and because we almost want it to be like a paste because it is spicy tuna I like to stack it and then slice it one more time and take those slices and slice them down one more time until they're nice and fine just like you is that childish? Keep in mind this fish is sushi grade slash sashimi grade. Do not eat any random tuna that you buy from the store unless you know and verify that it is sushi grade. From what I do know that Costco and Sam's both have sashimi grade fish now. From my knowledge, they are farm raised, but they are safe to eat raw. I would like to mention that this fish has literally no smell. Also from Noble Fish, I like using their spicy mayo sauce. So basically it's a mixture of mayo, um, tobiko or like some fish egg type and then uh, sriracha. So I'm just gonna add that to the mixture. I like doing just a drop of sesame seed oil and you could add a jalapeno that's finely diced, but this spicy mayo already had those hot peppers added. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this smells absolutely incredible. And after tasting it, I felt like I need just a pinch of salt. Alrighty, keep in mind we're making several different rolls. So we're just gonna have fun with this one. Just vibe, relax. I'm just sharing the basics and what I know so you can have fun in the kitchen too. Alrighty, so my thought process here is that the spicy tuna is nice and creamy so we want to to combat it with a, with a little bit of crunch. So I'm just gonna thin slice some uh, cucumbers just so you get nice and like, you know, crispy chunks like this. Alrighty, the sushi rice is nice and cooled down and it's ready to rumble. 
I have my beautiful bamboo roller here. And I personally prefer majority of the rolls that I make to have the rice on the outside of the seaweed. So we're gonna grab our beautiful nori sheet and place it on the bottom one third of this bamboo roller. That doesn't even make sense, the bottom half, it's not bottom one third. It's very important to note the sushi rice is very sticky, so you wanna dip your fingers in water. Hands are wet, we grab the ball of sushi rice so it doesn't stick to our fingers, and then we lay it out onto our nori sheet and just spread out. And what I learned is that you don't really wanna necessarily, you know, smear the rice, so be careful. This is what you want, this is the texture if you want. Don't overdo it on the rice, but at the same time, don't be uh, stingy. Alrighty, as mentioned, I like the rice to be on the outside of the roll. So we're gonna flip it. So on the bottom one third of the actual nori sheet, we're gonna start placing our filling. And then we're gonna grab our beautiful spicy tuna and we're gonna start laying it out and kind of forming it. Any more filling than this, honestly, even this one is probably gonna overspill just a tiny bit. You just have a little bit of slack room over here, about a three fourth of an inch. Okay, I like to kind of fold in and then I, and then I press and then bring it in. That is all the extra filling that you should have not filled, but it's fine. See how it looks right now? Okay, and then we're gonna fold it one more time and press. Gentle, firm presses, nothing too crazy, just like this. I told you that I overfilled it just a little bit as I predicted, so this is, you know, the extra on the sides, not a big deal. I would rather have it overfilled than underfilled, to be honest. Now, if you have a, you know, a sushi knife, use it. This is not a fillet, uh, this is not a sushi knife, but it's the closest thing to it. Uh, you wanna wet your knife as well when you're making your slices, and you wanna wet it every single slice. This looks too boring for me. We, are, we do not settle with boring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with more spicy tuna. This is a double spicy tuna. So I'm just gonna gently press it down just like this and form, form it. And now you have this beautiful double spicy tuna roll. To cut this nice safely and properly, I'm gonna actually cover it with another piece of saran wrap. Slice in half, nice slice, right? Wet your knife again. Go in with another half. And now we're gonna cut this half into another half. Take your bamboo roller and formulate it one more time and peel off the saran wrap. Now we have this beautiful double spicy tuna roll. It's beautifully filled and it's gonna be delicious. Alrighty, first roll is a double spicy tuna roll. And as always, now bismillah. I love covering it with just a little bit of eel sauce. It melts in your mouth and it's just delicious. Alrighty, let's have fun with the next roll. I have some beautiful salmon. Again, this is sushi grade. I'm gonna get some beautiful, nice little strips. Nori she goes on. The ball of rice that we uh, gently spread out. We have our beautiful uh, furikake as a bunch of flavor. So we're gonna toss this here. So this is some very high quality whipped cream cheese. So we're gonna equally distribute this across and then we're gonna fold in. Now don't you forget, what your knife? Slice in half. And then you always get, you know, a beautiful piece of sushi. You're just sick of the sushi rolls, you don't wanna make the sushi rolls anymore, or you wanna do something a little bit different with the same sushi ingredients. What you could do is cube up the salmon. We grab a beautiful bowl. Let's just center out the rice just like this, just for research purposes. All right, on one half, we could add our beautiful uh, salmon. On the other half, we could do our spicy tuna. We could cut down the cucumbers and add them in just a corner. Beautiful avocado, that's not beautiful, I lied. A scoop and dupe on the opposite side of the cucumber that is also green. You could grab a whole bunch of seaweed and just plop it on the top. This is Masago Smelt Row. You could just get generous in this corner. And then in the empty corner, we could just go in with a bunch of crispy onions. Now we don't wanna forget our sauces, so we're gonna do some eel sauce in this corner. And in this corner, we're just gonna do a little bit of spicy mayo. Nice, let's just ruin the plate by planning it like a child. Furikake on everything, just a little bit. Nothing, nothing crazy. Oh my. And voila, now you have all this fresh fish and you have a brand new meal. Uh, without making actual sushi and it looks gorgeous. Okay, I showed you two rolls and a poke bowl But what I really hope that I showed you is that you could just have fun with it and you know Do stuff that is versatile now. I just want to say one thing I spent $35 on getting fresh sashimi grade fish just for myself with all the ingredients It's probably about 50 60 70 dollars even for a full meal. Yes I make food content, but we must remember one thing currently There's people in Palestine that are dying a lot of these people are cut off from basic needs such as electricity Siblings are literally swapping their kids just in case they get attacked now with that being said Count your blessings and spread the word. That's the least we can do. I was just trying to remind you how much blessings we live in. I'm making sushi for myself when some people don't even have the means to live. Just keep that in mind. I just wanted to plant that seed and just give you, you know, food for thought. Now, I'd also like to say that I am blessed to the world. Like, I am so blessed and honored to be here. I swear to God, I say this every single time. Thank you so much. And that's what I do what I do. That's why you guys motivate me to just be here constantly. Uh, make this content for y'all and hopefully spread, spread positive vibes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the bell notific notification so when I post, um, you see the video. I'm gonna mess up this outro once again, but it's all good. I told myself that I'm not gonna edit out the, uh, the outros. 
I don't know how to speak. If you didn't know, if you know me, you know that I don't know how to speak. Actually, I just stumble on my words. But it's all good. We're working on it. Uh, thank you so much. Much blessings. Uh, don't forget to stand for for justice. And as always, now Bismillah.